All right, welcome back to another stream. And in this one, we are going to be adding um, syntax highlighting to one of our blog posts. So I have a blog post that shows you how you can add um, icons to your React website. So I'll show you an example in here. So all the social media icons that you see in here are coming from a library called React Icons. And what this library allows you to do is to um, import icons selectively. So you don't have to import the whole icon library into your project and you can just cherry pick the ones that you want. This way, your bundle size doesn't get too big. And yeah, anyway, so um, I'm going to add syntax highlighting to this, these pieces of code in here. So what do we do? There's this library that someone else wrote. Obviously, there's always a library when you're doing JavaScript development. But yeah, there's this library called React Syntax Highlighter. And this library is really simple. I'll just show you an example on how it's used. So you just import the library and then you have your piece of code in here and then you literally put your code inside this component and it just gives you styled code. Easy as that. Um, but we have to do some work to integrate this with our Markdown. So as far as, I'm not sure if you know, but I'm, I'm using Markdown files to render all of my blogs. And currently the way that I render code is like this. So I just use Markdown and I just specify the language in here and it, this doesn't really do much, but still it displays the code in the format that I want. So I would consider this as a working solution, but we're just going to make this better. Before we start, I'm going to show you how big my website is right now without syntax highlighting. So it's 857 kilobytes. We're just going to see how much of a difference this library makes. And if it's more than like 200 kilobytes, then I'm probably not going to do it. Let's see, there's a light build option that we can use. So you're going to start with that. Okay, so how is this thing used? We are going to be using Prism. So we, we want to have a light build of Prism. So if you import it like this, yes, it would probably work, but this is going to take a lot of space in our bundle size. So I'm going to do the light build for Prism. So we have something called Prism Light in here, and I'm just gonna copy these three. And this is my blog post component, and I'm going to use Prism in my blog post component. So I'll just paste them right before Markdown to JSX. And obviously I have to install the library. So I'll go back, I'll scroll to the top. This is the library and they have included a shortcut, shortcut on how you can save this to your package.json. So I'll paste this in here. So while that's doing its thing, let's try to understand what these things do. Okay, so this thing um, imports Prism Lite from syntax, as syntax highlighter from from this package and then this imports the JSX language and this is probably a theme. Yeah, it's a style. Okay, well, I can pick whatever whatever style I want, right? So I'll just do that. But how do you actually register languages? Okay, so this is how you register languages. Um, if you're using a light build, then it doesn't import all of the languages that the library supports and you have to cherry pick the languages that you are using. So I use JavaScript, I use JSX, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll just put this in here. Okay, that should work. And I want to pick some styles. So, so you can use styles like this. Okay, so these are all the theme alternatives. Um, Oh, we have Darkul in here. Okay, this is a very difficult choice and I'll probably make the choice offline, but just to demonstrate to you that this is going to work with dark mode, I'll pick Dark Cooler for the dark version and I'll pick Solarized Light for the light one. I'll delete this one. Okay, we need to register these in our markdown render. And our markdown render is in here. The way that we specify custom components is by using the overrides option in here. And I'm just going to do the same for syntax highlighting. So we're going to call this thing syntax highlighter. And the component is going to be called syntax highlighter as well. Um, props. So depending on if the user's um, selection is dark mode or light mode, we are going to pick between two different teams, right? So we're going to do something like this. If the user is in dark mode, then we're going to pick up Darkula, which is a theme that we have imported in here. And if it's light mode, then we're going to go to 
solarized light. Yeah, if it's light mode, then we, we're going to pick solarized light. Okay, let's put, let's put the colons in there. I think this might work. Now we need to modify our React icons blog post in here. Okay, so how do we use this thing? So this is the syntax. We copy this thing and well, I can pretty much replace that part with this one and I need to put the closing tags. So I'll just copy the closing tags from there. I'll paste this in. Okay. Uh, we, are, we are providing style as a property in here so we can get rid of that from there. Okay, this should work. Language is JavaScript and yeah, it seems to be fine. So let's try this out. Okay, let's go into our blog, React icons. Huh. Okay, this theme is weird. <laughs> um, and it doesn't seem to be changing between light and dark mode. And it's not displaying some parts of code that I had in my blog post originally, right? So it just displays these two lines and then, oh, I see, syntax highlighter is not closed. So it needs all of these things to be together. I see, okay. So now it should render the code. Okay, it's rendering the code now, but there's no style and it's and it stops after the return statement in here. And that's because there's another opening tag in here. So this is an HTML element. This is another HTML element, but we have to escape this thing, right? Um, so the way that you escape um, the tags in Markdown is apparently by using this, you have to replace all of your less than characters with these things so it renders properly. This is a very hacky way and I might just write my own custom render or override some stuff later on, but this is this is something that we can do now. So I'll just do that and that should hopefully fix everything. Or maybe no. Oh yes, okay, I see what's wrong. So I forgot to put curly brackets down here. So if you can, okay. Oops, okay, so this should be called style and this should be is dark. Hmm, that might be better. I'm not sure, we'll see. Oh yeah, it, it works now. So that's that was it, that's just the missing curly bracket down there. I am going to apply this to the remaining code blocks that I have and it's really simple actually. So I'm just going to copy this again, I'm going to paste it in here, I'm going to replace the closing tags with the other thingy. So I'll remove these, put that in here. I have to replace this um, opening tag with this weird thing in here, which is fine, right? Because I don't have to do this all the time. I just need to do it for one, two, three times, which is yeah, absolutely fine. So I'll copy this thing here, paste it there, copy this, paste it there. Yeah, that's probably it. Okay, this is, hmm. This is not getting proper syntax highlighting because we probably did not have, yeah, this is probably not the right language, right? Okay, what other languages do we support? Do we have bash support? So we have JSX, what other things do we have? Oh yeah, we do have bash. Okay, that means we can do this. All right. I hope it just works out of the box. Come on, refresh. There you go. Now Bash is working as well. Okay, this looks very good. This looks actually really good. Okay, I'm going to do a build again and we're going to see how much space this new library takes. Okay, so this is 909 kilobytes, but we were at um, 857 kilobytes. Yeah, 50 kilobytes-ish, not that bad. Um, I guess I'll take it. This is a good trade-off to have. It looks way nicer than before. And I think I'm going to pick different themes, but I can do that offline. And yeah, you can pick your own and change the colors to suit your needs. And you can even probably define your own theme if you're really into that. We'll see, okay, maybe I'll do it, I don't know. Okay, you can finally get rid of the Menno font. And we can do a deployment. 
this is it. Well, um, I hope you learned something new and I will see you on the next one. All right, bye.